folks, welcome back to my little shop for another quick shaper tip. I've been looking forward to doing this little video for a while. So in the early days of power tool manufacturing, the manufacturers started to realize what hand tool woodworkers have known, had known for a long period of time. And that is, if you put your cutting edges on a very slight angle with respect to the direction of travel, you can often get through difficult grain with a lot less run out and a lot higher surface quality. So especially on jointers and planers, they started putting knives on a slight skew angle. And they're very common on shaper tooling as well. This, for example, is a Z4 shaper cutter. And Z4 means there are four cutters around the cutting circle. And this is what they call a dual shear cutter. In other words, the angles are, are different. So for this, this cutter, the angle is slightly this way. And on this cutter, it's that way. It just increases the likelihood that you are going to get through whatever squirrely grain you have as cleanly as possible. This cutter head works extremely well. It leaves a beautiful finish. It's unbelievable. But what a lot of folks don't realize, and this came up on the forums a little while ago, and I was surprised to realize that even a bunch of the old veteran shaper users who teach courses on it and the whole works, they did not realize that a straight knife on an angle around the cutting path will actually cut for you a very slight radius surface. Now, it's a bit diff difficult to uh, visualize why that is. So I'm gonna use this little piece of pipe here. And let's imagine that this little piece of wood here is your carbide insert. So this edge is parallel to this edge. So whatever happens on this edge is also happening on that. You'll see why I say that in a minute. Okay, so Let's imagine a straight cutter, no shear angle at all. So you can see that the R carbide tip there is touching the edge of the cylinder all the way on the top and all the way on the bottom, which means that the radius of the, of the, of the cutter, the effective cutting edge, the radius is the same all the way up and down the cutter. Now what happens when we take the cutter and we put it on a little bit of a skew? Now I'm exaggerating it, you wouldn't find very many cutters like uh, with that much of a skew, but you can see the edge has migrated away from the cylinder, which means that effectively the radius of the cutting circle is larger here than it is here. So that is why a skew, a straight knife on a skew around a circular cutter head will actually give you a very mild radius on your cut. That is very much exaggerated just to make the point. Now, in the real world, does it actually matter? Not very often because your rebates are, are usually not done in such a way as that you would see this, uh, this artifact. So what situations might you see it? Well, if you were to butt two of them right up against each other like this, you might find, again, this is, this is very much exaggerated. You might find that your glue line there is a little heavier than you want to see. So where should you not worry about it? Basically, if you're widthing with the shaper, I use a shaper with an outboard fence a lot for bringing things down to final width. The radius there, you will never see it. Um, you also don't have to worry about it if you are stacking cutter blocks, for example. So if you have one cutter block here and your spindle is there and you've got another cutter block like this and you are stacking them like that to make a tenon. Well, what's happened is the block is largest diameter here and smallest there. So at worst, what's going to happen again, I can't, I've always said it twice already, but I don't want I'm, I'm exaggerating this. So at worst, what's going to happen is the shoulder is going to be a little bit like this. So when you insert it into your rail, okay, it's going to be tight there and it's going to be tight there. I know I've said it three times, I'm going to say it a fourth time. This is massively exaggerated. But I just thought it was an interesting uh, artifact of geometry that a lot of folks don't know. So uh, I thought I'd help you maybe see that and visualize it. Now, in, for example, um, jointers and planers that where the knives are ground in the head, that's all taken care of and it's perfect. So that's in that case, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get a all the benefits of a sheer cutting action without any effect like this. Now this might 
uh, matter if you're on a 16 inch wide jointer, for example. That could actually matter. But on you know something small like a shaper head, 99.9% .9 of the time, it never actually matters. Now, this is a bird head and it is a true helical head in that it is on an angle, it's on a very slight um, angle and the knives are also on a slight skew. So that gives them a nice slicing action, which is why these heads are usually pretty good. However, you notice how they're addressed here is that these carbide inserts have a very mild radius and that's designed to account for that. So that they do, these, these don't leave tracks um, at, the, at the apex of this. They don't leave tracks all the way along the wood. Now, why do some of these bird heads leave tracks anyway? It's because they always make the same um, same insert with the same diameter, but they make different cutter heads of a different diameter. So the ideal radius is really only kind of for one diameter and one skew combination. So if you deviate from that, you're going to have some imperfections. That's why some of these heads perform better than others. However, in the real world, especially in uh, spindle molder or shaper tooling, 99% of the time it will never matter, but it is quite interesting, so I thought you might find it neat.